Hari Singh Nalva and its steam conqueror of the Sikh Khalsa army spearheaded efforts to expand the Sikh Empire's rule into West Afghanistan, spoiling Afghans' own conquest for territorial expansion. Amongst many titles, he served as Dernal, or Commander-in-Chief of the Sikh Khalsa Army, along the Afghan frontiers from 1825 to 1837, fighting in over 20 major battles without a loss on his record. He led invasions into Afghan-held territories, Selkot, Kasur, Atok, Multan, Peshawar, and Jamrud while cementing his legacy as a fierce general. Historically, one of the only few list of commanders to defeat the Afghans in their own backyard. Born in 1791 to a family of warriors in the city of Gujranwala, present-day Punjab, Pakistan, his father, Gurdel Singh Ba, lost his life in battle when Hari Singh was just seven years old, and Nalwa was a sincere follower of the Sikh religion and became an Ahmadari Sikh by the age of 10 years old. He was well trained in horse riding and martial arts, raised by his mother, Sharamgar, until he joined the first king of the Sikh empire, Maharaja Ranjit Singh's court, as a personal attendant in his teenage years. Hari Singh was given the name Nalva by Maharaja Ranjit Singh. As the legend goes, during a hunting expedition with his Maharaja, a tiger charged at Hari Singh, and he was unable to draw his weapon. After the initial scrimmage, Hari Singh was able to use his sword to kill the tiger. The details of this story, however, have been disputed, with some arguing that Hari Singh never drew his sword, and in fact killed the wild tiger with his bare hands. Nevertheless, he was recognized for his bravery and given the name Nalva, the Tiger Killer. Once Maharaja Ranjit Singh and the Sikh army captured Lahore and Amritsar from the Afghans, he recognized the risk of invasion from neighboring states and began hiring French mercenaries who had previously fought for Napoleon to ensure his army stays competitive with time. The Maharaja modernized his army of cavaliers who previously held weapons on horsebacks engaging in guerrilla warfare to multifaceted groups of marching foot soldiers as well as cavaliers. He adopted the western style of warfare, updating his artillery using modern weapons such as the cast gun, cannonballs, and mixing gunpowder. He also reorganized the army into three wings. For the elite cavalry, he had hand-picked generals such as Hari Singh Nalwa and Hukma Singh Chimni. Hari Singh was one of Maharaja's most trusted generals who was assigned the task of protecting the empire from Afghan invasion through the Cyber Pass, which had been used by foreign invaders in the past. Hari Singh Nalwa was also trusted with the near impossible task of delivering Afghanistan to his Maharaja and spent the next few decades exemplifying exactly why he was one of the Maharaja's most trusted commanders. Nalwa would take Atok in 1813, Multan in 1818, Pakli and Kashmir in 1819, Mongol in 1821, Mankera in 1822, Naushera in 1823, Sirikot in 1824, Saidu in 1827. While focusing on the Afghan frontier, Nalwa became a merciless administrator who would rule over the Afghans with an iron fist. He would use the same harsh tactics the Afghans had used on the Sikh people in the past, burning through towns. When the Patans, an ethnic group in Afghanistan, resisted, they faced the wrath of Hari Singh Nalwa. It is now a common tradition for Patani men to wear a salvat, an article of clothing traditionally worn by women. It is said that the Patans first began to wear traditional women's clothing, a salvat, in hopes of mercy from Nalwa and his men to further protect the Sikh Empire's territories against rebellion. Nalwa also built a chain of forts in close proximity to one another. In 1834, the Afghans withdrew from their region without any battle needed in Peshawar. Jamrud was a key region due to its close proximity to the Khyber Pass and was won by Hari Singh in 1836. Hari Singh Nalwa's final battle would happen in Jamrud in 1837. While Maharaja Ranji Singh was busy arranging his son's wedding and Nalwa reportedly sick in bed 
in Peshawar, Dost Muhammad, who had previously ruled over Peshawar and Kabul took advantage. He devised a plan to attack bases in Jamrud, Shabkadar, and Peshawar. First on his list was Jamrud. He mobilized 25,000 of his men to attack the Jamrud fort against 600 men. The Sikh Khalsa army was completely outnumbered and the walls of the fort were destroyed within hours with the men barely able to hold the invaders at bay. Nelwa rose from his sickbed in Peshawar and rushed to help the commander of Maha Singh's men in Jamru. Knowing the disadvantage they were in, Nelwa took position in the Valley of Khyber, ensuring his escape in case of defeat. Although outnumbered three to one, the momentum began to change after seven days of battle. As the Afghans and the Pathans began to lose morale, Nelwa ordered his men to advance further. There are conflicting views on what exactly led to Nelwa's death in the Battle of Jamrud. Some believe he was killed by friendly fire during battle, and others believe Nelwa's Hauda was closely eyed by Dost Muhammad's son, Muhammad Akbar Khan, who inflicted the mortal wounds. Before being cremated in the Jamrud fort, Nelwa's final orders to the army were to keep his death a secret until the Battle of Jamrud was won. For the Afghan forces, this defeat was hailed as a success as they were able to finally rid themselves of one of their most dangerous opponents. Dost Muhammad would make one last attempt to capture Peshawar this time through diplomacy, asking for Peshawar in exchange for peace at the frontier. He receives a stern response from the Maharaja, who had plans to avenge Hari Singh Nawa's death by taking over the rest of Afghanistan instead. The Maharaja replies that peace between the two states is not solely the Afghans' decision, and just as the Afghans can force war on the Sikh Khalsa army, so too can the Sikh Khalsa army wage war on the Afghans. Dost Muhammad would be removed from his throne and replaced by Shah Suja with the death of Hari Singh Nalwa in 1837 and the death of Maharaja Ranjit Singh in 1839. The Sikh empire would fall within a short decade, becoming the final peace the British needed to take full control of India.